topic is surgical techniques for fixing distal femur fractures. Good morning. Uh, thanks uh, for the opportunity to talk, and thanks to uh, some of my colleagues for pirating some of their slides. Uh, I have no disclosures. We're going to talk about distal femoral uh, fixation and uh, touch mostly on uh, the anatomy, uh, the really understanding the injury we're working on, and talk about some of the concepts behind decision making and, and, and really uh, planning out the, the uh, surgery so you can get the obviously the, the, the best result possible and appreciate different surgical approaches and strategies. Uh, bimodal distribution, uh, we see this a lot of places and uh, true here as well. Uh, higher energy for younger folks, lower energy uh, falls for uh, older folks. We want to do what we do elsewhere in the body here as well. We want to restore length, rotation, and alignment and get folks moving. So, first thing we do is get the x-rays and whether they're good or not, uh, sometimes it's what you're looking at at your computer at night. But if it's not what you need, you need to make sure that uh, you have appropriate studies to assess not only what to do immediately, but what uh, you need in order to plan out your definitive procedure. Uh, CT scans are extremely helpful, particularly when identifying the uh, uh, coronal, uh, 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 coronal and sagittal uh, recons, especially when looking for uh, half of, uh, uh, fractures, which we'll talk about. And uh, they also help you plan your approach. So speaking of alignment, um, as with the tibia, uh, there are tolerances, but uh, you want to have an understanding of the uh, different uh, mechanical and anatomic axes as they relate not only to that patient's particular anatomy, but to that patient's activity level. Oftentimes patients will also, in particularly the elderly population, they might be marginal or community ambulators versus a household ambulator with uh, pre-existing flexion contractures, uh, pre-existing prostheses. Uh, some of these distal femur fractures are in fact periprosthetic, so there might be a malalignment or realignment there. So having an understanding of what that person's alignment was prior to the injury uh, is, is extremely important. Uh, radiographs, when obtaining radiographs, it's important to really examine both condyles so you can have an appreciation of whether or not that separate Hoffa fragment or uh, split is something that needs to be addressed. Um, not knowing that and going in uh, having not planned it uh, can make for a, an unpleasant experience or, or a long day. And it's probably happened to everybody here, but for those of us uh, who've been doing it for a while, it happens early and once or twice, and you try not to let it happen again. CT imaging I alluded to. Uh, and this is, is the key because this d does prevent those, those bad uh, aha moments from occurring. Uh, you can really isolate the fragments involved, uh, plan out your fixation based on the, 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 uh, the, the orientation of the, the fragments. And then once you have your studies, you do want to classify it. This is actually a good classification. Um, this is bone 33 and distal femur, so A, B, and C. Uh, a being extra-articular, intra-articular single condylar fractures are graded as B, and type C involves both condyles, and uh, as you go from left to right, uh, the complexity of the fracture itself is, is greater. But this is actually a very useful classification, uh, and like most useful classifications, uh, helps you plan your surgery or predict outcome. So for type A fractures, uh, you're looking for relative stability, functional reduction, and um, in general, uh, you're taking a, a, I don't want to say a two-part fracture, but a uh, two major fragments. And if you just concentrate on length, rotation, and alignment with appropriate technique, um, this is this is going to heal. So simple metaphyseal fractures. Uh, usually, you can. Uh, use uh, direct reduction techniques if necessary. If you do have significant comminution, if it's a, not a stable fracture pattern or an open fracture that you need to expose and debride anyway, uh, 
but uh, in some cases you can rely on absolute stability in, in this particular fracture pattern and use uh, uh, direct plating. Uh, this is more traditional plate, but uh, what you see more often and what I prefer, uh, I, I like rods as well uh, because of the limited soft tissue uh, compromise um, and it's a bio more biologically friendly construct. Um, in general, uh, Type A's are, 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 you know, the ones that you can rod, but even in situations where you're running into a type C fracture, uh, you want to turn a C into an A so you can treat it like an A. And, and so I think we all have looked at these where you try and uh, uh, reduce an intercondylar or, or a condylar type fracture and, and simplify so you can uh, use a, at least in my case, uh, try and put a nail in. Uh, B fractures. Uh, require screws and buttress plating oftentimes. Uh, again, you can go for absolute stability in these. Uh, C fractures, uh, you need to address the joint. Uh, I talked about the Hoffa fracture, and it does happen, it happens fairly frequently, and getting a CT scan does prevent that from being a major issue. Um, those of you, my tenure, I've, I've been, this is my 20th year in practice, I think I spent half of my internship in the CT scan, uh, waiting for films uh, at night, and that's my, that was my power nap time. Now, I guess a power nap would be all of a minute and a half, um, but there's really no excuse for not having this identified nowadays uh, on, a, on a CT. But when it does occur, uh, it, it's, uh, it's missed about 25% of the time if a CT scan isn't, uh, isn't uh, uh, done. And as I said, this is the one that not only can make the surgery itself difficult if you haven't pre-planned it, but if it's not addressed, can severely compromise your result if it's not fixed appropriately and identified as a, a major uh, component to someone's appropriate recovery and function. open fractures are also more likely to, to see these. So it's all about planning, having information, and, and going the right direction. Um, but when it does come to planning, you want to make sure that, uh, if, if, barring a, an, an emergent situation, um, you know, this is a long bone injury. Uh, it can be high energy, as we alluded to, or lower energy. Uh, if you have a fracture block or a dedicated time, this is something that, that, you know, if you can plan and have an OR with dedicated staff, the, the case is going to go better. Um, but that's not always the case. Uh, you want to obviously uh, assess a patient's condition, make sure you have the right equipment, uh, both in the OR and the right team, if at all possible. Um, so you want to be this guy instead and really have a plan of attack. Uh, when you do decide what to do, your treatment options are, you know, you're, you're either going to X fix it if the soft tissue is an issue and there's compromised bone loss or an open uh, fracture that needs to be addressed as the priority. So external fixator is oftentimes the best thing to do. Even a neomobilizer in a lower energy uh, periprosthetic uh, distal femur fracture is something that, or even just buttressing with uh, bolsters, pillows, and keeping someone comfortable. Um, I would like to talk maybe or later about the, there's a, some literature uh, most recently and some trends toward uh, femoral blocks for pain management and elderly folks for uh, just lessening narcotic use and delirium in the elderly. So that's maybe something people can speak about later. Um, I don't see it a whole lot. I have a couple anesthesiologists who are doing it. Um, or trying to introduce it, um, be interested in seeing what some people uh, say. I digress, I apologize. Um, but ORIF, uh, XFIX, distal femoral uh, replacement in uh, cases of a highly comminuted, displaced, uh, 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 older patient, uh, non-reconstructable, um, there are uh, very good studies that show that this is a, a very good option in the select uh, population and non-operative management uh, is a rare uh, indication but is something that, that is, is present. Um, and uh, RIF versus retrograde nails, uh, this sometimes comes down to the type of implant in a periprosthetic, in a non-periprosthetic fracture, it comes down sometimes to uh, the surgeon preference or the fracture pattern itself but it's what you're comfortable with. I would advocate getting comfortable with both. Um, 
because sometimes the, the choice is, is not yours. Uh, so when we do approach these, uh, a lateral approach is, is most common when, when plating. Um, there's uh, the parapetellar approach, uh, medial or posterior, so-called swashbuckler approach has been described. Uh, whether it's open or percutaneous, it's all about respecting the soft tissue. So you can do a open approach as long as you don't strip the heck out of it. Or you can do a percutaneous approach and, and do a whole bunch of uh, uh, tugging through very small incisions and, and do just as much damage. So it's just important to uh, really uh, respect the tissues, treat them well, and overcome deforming forces. Uh, a lot of times, rather than just tugging, 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 it's a appropriate use of reduction techniques and uh, tools, including an external fixator. You can make sure the patient has a, if you have to be there when the patient gets in the OR and realize that the anesthesiologist's gone and there's an anesthetist student's there and an LMA was put in and they're going off to take care of the other room. That's a common uh, scenario. Uh, but you want to make sure someone can be relaxed. Clamps, bolsters, um, uh, K wires, uh, just as in the proximal femur, uh, bumps, triangles, joysticks, all these things help, help you reduce and, and, and get reductions through uh, soft tissue uh, respecting uh, techniques. Um, but paralysis and bumps, I think, are key in, over the, in overcoming deforming forces. And blocking screws, don't forget blocking screws, uh, can be very helpful, particularly when rotting in a, co a capacious canal. Uh, thermal distractors or residents work well, too. Uh, respect the anatomy, know the anatomy. Um, realize that uh, plate uh, position is going to be dictated by anatomy to some degree, or to a great degree, and appropriately positioning your plate is key so that you don't result, uh, have the result of a malreduction as your plate is uh, secured to usually the proximal fragment. You don't want a malrotation deformity. I think our, our, uh, our moderator here has spoken on this uh, and, and talked about uh, appropriately uh, placing the uh, distal segment dictates uh, what things are going to look like proximally. Uh, you don't want to put your plate too far uh, posterior. Uh, you'll get medialization of your condylar segment. You'll get screws uh, through your notch uh, coming out anteriorly and your patellofemoral joint if positioned, uh, if malrotated. Um, so you really want to uh, uh, make sure you take the time to position your plate, get your APs and laterals, have everything draped out so that you have a clear view and, and you're not, uh, sometimes you say, oh, it's such a hassle going back and forth to the CRM. Take the time early in your career or if you're just not sure, I would encourage you to get post-operative CT scans just to really, as, as Dr. DeLong said, keep score. And when reducing, uh, get the joint reduced first, and then just work your way up. I'm getting the, uh, we'll go through all this in the lab. To sum up, know the anatomy, realize the, the, the uh, orientation of your hardware will dictate the orientation of your uh, uh, final uh, uh, fracture fixation. Uh, really base a strategy on the fracture pattern. So this is a very straightforward, simple uh, uh, classification that is, is quite useful for planning. Some aren't, this one really is, and does dictate sometimes which implant you should use. Uh, get the joint reduced, that's why we're doing this. Uh, get the alignment uh, axially correct and uh, truly understand your implant and get good at plating and rotting. Uh, just uh, if you keep these principles in mind, you, you will.